Bobby. Why don't you hop feet? Hop like a frog. But I ain't no frog. Come on, Bob. Hurry, Freddy. Young man, hold the cheese close to your heart. And in the other hand, hold the girl. Come here, Laura. Hey, wait a minute. I take second money here. All right, get in. Uh, but anyhow, one of my boys won. Just which one is your boy? We are getting confused. Oh, Fred is my son and Bobby is my boy. Oh. Oh. Smile all over, face. So, hold. My God. <laughs> hey, we're going to open this cheese right now. <laughs> The cheese goes beer. Beer! Ah! One cheese and five for nickel. Coming thanks, up. Thanks, I've been looking all over for you. Are you even going to have one, Dad? Oh, gee, I'm busy, kid. Well, I don't ever see you anymore. Only every day at the office. You wouldn't call that seeing a fellow, would you? I mean, like we used to. Look, you're a good kid. Can't you let bygones be bygones? Hey, Anna. Stop yanking me. Oh, don't be a dope, honey. Can't you see that guy's off you? Oh, yeah. And I'm off you, too. My friend, I have something very important to tell you. Come on, let's listen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last time I shall be with you on such an outing. I have sold the school. That's too bad. We'll miss you, Professor. It's a shame to close the school. We need it. But the school will not be closed. It will still be there to teach you how to become citizens. But it will be under a new management. I want you to meet my successor, a very fine young man. <laughs> Mr. Robert Ames. Oh, well, Bob. Fine, Bobby, fine. Ames, boy? He looks like he's too young. Let us hear now from your new director. <laughs> Friends and neighbors, and I hope pupils, don't hold it against me because you knew me when my nose needed wiping. <laughs> That's all right. Then we give you a chance, If Bob. I can afford, I'll try you. Thanks. Folks, the school's going to be run on the American plan. Now, you've all got friends and relatives who need this school, who want to be citizens. And they've got friends and relatives. Listen, Machek, your cousin over in Williamsburg ought to come to my school. Sure, why not? <laughs> How about my Uncle Julie Johnson out in Minnesota State? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll get him, too. I'll have correspondence courses. Now, don't forget, friends, kick in with the addresses of everybody you know. Here, out of town, anywhere. They'll learn to be citizens by mail. Can't you see it? Those swell magyars in the coal fields of Pennsylvania. Those Svenskas out in Minnesota. The Portuguese fishermen in New England. And the Polak tobacco farmers in Connecticut. They'll all make fine citizens. You're right, <laughs> You sly loafer. So you're going to teach our friends how to become good citizens, eh? Bob Barrett, you didn't think I was going to hang around racetracks all my life. Bobby, this is exactly what I wanted for you. Hey, how about my taking care of your legal business? You'll get out of school first. I graduate tomorrow night, you <laughs> lug. He's practically a judge already. A senator. Then president. Wind up with a two-month Riverside Drive like Grant. <laughs> what a career. Greetings, my colleague. Professor Ames, how about? I'll have to get me a cutaway just like yours, Professor. May I take him for a minute? You can take him for a week. Laura and I want to be alone. He never gives us a chance. You haven't got a chance, huh? Haven't I anything to say? No! Yes, I mean, no. <laughs> I'm so happy I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> that fine woman makes you two boys ambitious, no? <laughs> sure does. Of course, you have the final payment, the $500. Oh, but you promised My plans have changed. I cannot wait. But I can't. I sail for Europe on Tuesday. I need cash. Then why don't you announce the sale? You know I haven't got it. You put me in a spot. <laughs> a little psychological device. Trying to make a monkey out of me, huh? Gently, gently. The case I gave you of public esteem will 
inspire you to raise the money. Where can I get $500 in two days? You will find a way. Give me two weeks. Tomorrow. That finishes the seventh at Hialeah. Retardo first money, 11 Back bay, 640, 420. Lamp black, 380. He shows. Lamp black, that's me. Get something down on the last break. Okay. Mr. Moriarty, would you say the stars are favorably disposed toward the nag named Free Pass? I never play him. But you provide us with every convenience to gamble. Very broad-minded. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mom. Hiya, boss. How they coming? How's about the eighth, Anna? They're coming to the post. Okay, Anna. They're showing in the paddock, boss. Okay. Bob, Bob let's call it off. I'm scared. Supposing they catch us. Stop worrying, Anna. We can't miss this. My chance to get that dough. All right, Bob. I'll try. Wait a minute. There they go. They're off. Getting set for the eighth at High Leah. You're leaving the paddock. Get your best get down. Oh, Rounding the turn, Gaylord is out in front by half a length. Three pass is giving him a fight. It's a cinch for Gaylord. He's way out in front. Coming to the post. Gaylord is giving his jockey trouble. Our right side is acting up. They're coming in the stretch. They are still in front. Three passes is speeding. It's an open field for third money. They are pulling away. They are pulling four lengths ahead. They are the winner. They are. Two hundred on his proposal. H S. They're off. Nip and tuck, but Gaylord's got the position. Gaylord steals away from him. Free pass hangs onto his tail. Coming into the stretch, looks sure for Gaylord by four links. Gaylord, the winner! Pithiest second, free pass takes where's my name? Gaylord, 1088, 60, 640. Pithiest, 440, 220. Free pass, 380. Sitting pretty, huh? We put it over. Isn't it wonderful? I'm so glad you're all set. Anna, Moriarty wants to see you. Just a minute, Professor. Uh, Mr. Moriarty wants to see you. I didn't do nothing, Miss Moriarty. Who said you did? Put that money down. Bob. How long have you been working this ragged monkey? Taking it from you isn't stealing, Moriarty. I ain't gonna call the cops. The boys will take care of you. Please. Please don't hurt him. Honest, we only tried it this once. Maybe you can scare these two, but you're not gonna do anything to us. No. Just once over lightly. You're not gonna hurt anybody. Come on, we're getting out of here. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Out of this dump. I'm quitting. Quit. I catch you robbing me and you quit just like that? <laughs> Go on, get out of here before I break your neck. <laughs> he made me off his last. You mean to say you're going to let him go, Wallace? <laughs> I'm sorry, Professor. So am I. Good day. Listen, I, I will not be talked into risking my neck again. I lost my job. I'll get you a better one. Come in with me 50-50. Be my partner. If I could control you, yes. Well, what do you got to lose? I sail for Europe tomorrow. But I've already paid you six hundred dollars. That is your loss. Give me until tomorrow. I'll get the money. I'll get it. I sail at four. Hey there! Where do you think you're going? I thought we were to pick you up. Okay. Hi, Professor. I'll see you first thing in the morning, Professor. No later than ten. Fine, thanks. Jump in, Bob. This is our busy day. Come on. Bye, Professor. He's doing all this for her. He bought a virtue, my dear. What does that make me? A pathological guinea pig. Good afternoon. All right. Well, nothing 
like having two boats. Lucky you. <laughs> Without an egg. And three straws. I'm ahead of you. It's mating. <laughs> For 15 years, it's been one wallet and three straws. When are you three going to grow up? Thought you'd be serving champagne on a day like this, Pa. This is champagne. Cow champagne, the very best. <laughs> Tonight we have a party with beer. Say, Laura. With my boy graduating a lawyer tonight and Bob buying a school business, pretty soon you'll have to choose between them. Well, to keep peace in the family, I'll marry a stranger. Over my dead body. You'll marry one of us and stay an old maid. <laughs> Crazy cats is trumps. Say, Freddy, when are you going to shave and practice your speech? You know, I know that speech by heart already. This is the second time he's made me shave today. Well, it ain't every day a man graduates from a law school. Go on now, go on, go on, go on. you any time, Patsy. I'll get to it. Come on, dear. <laughs> and the book. Yeah. Well, Barry. Yeah? There's one businessman to another. Give me a little advice. I need your advice, too. Pa? Yes? Where do you keep the chewing tobacco? Right next to the love nest, up there. You know, I owe you an awful lot. Yes, and I owe you a lot. I owe you my boy's life. Who pulled him out of the river, huh? Oh, that was only swimming lesson. Yeah. Now, these days, a fellow wants to get started, he's got to have a little capital, you see. Yeah, I... You're telling me. <laughs> you think I was going to let Freddy stop without a shoestring? But I... There's no buts about it. I got it all here. Wait, I'll show you. Look at here. Look at this. Six hundred dollars. Well, that's swell, <laughs> I wouldn't even pass it to a bank. And was I right? Didn't the bank fail? This is my bank. What's all this money about? To open my office for Freddy. Shh. It's a secret. Hey, Bob, Laura, I need a workout with an audience. Go ahead, Bobby, you go. Laura, you stay here and make a nice package of this, huh? 20, 70, 90. 110, 160, 170. Look how clumsy I am. We can fetch it. All right. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. 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 And you got the average. Let me six hundred dollars. <laughs> there you are. Oh, thank you. That's fine. That's fine. You made a wonderful job of this. Hey, he's gonna knock him for a loop. Ah, that boy is better than William Jennings. He's got a voice of gold and silver. Did he shave? Stop worrying. I'll meet you back here at 7.30. We'll all go up together, huh? Yes. And change your shirt. And don't forget to take a bath. It won't hurt you. Time to make out, Bob. I'm sorry, honey. I tried to. Thanks, kid. What am I gonna do? Hello? Oh. Hello, Laura. Yeah, I've been waiting for a phone call. I'll only be a few minutes late. Talk at the jitters? If I don't get there in ten minutes, go on without me. I'll meet you there, darling. Oh, I guess I'd better forget it. Bob. Yeah? You don't even know I'm here, do you? Oh, don't start that now. Honey, you know I... Stop I... slavering over me. I'm only good enough to steal for you. Oh, quit it. Why don't you go home and let me alone? can't get that money. You won't be able to buy that school. She'll marry that lawyer guy. You haven't got a chance. You're nothing but a cheap grifter.
like being all dressed up like Mrs. Astor's horse. You look like an ambassador. Yeah, French ambassador. Yeah, French. I feel more comfortable in the store with my apron on. Wait a minute. Huh? My apron. I've done it. What's the matter? I forgot my ticket in the pocket of my apron. All right, I'm back and get it for you. No, 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 I get it myself. Do you think I want you to be late for your own graduation? Well, Pa, it'll only take a minute. Never mind, I catch the next train. I would never forgive myself if you was late for your speech because I'm such a dunkum. Now, go ahead, go ahead. Right. Go on, go on, I get it. <laughs> Did you come back? Ticket. I forgot it. I wouldn't hurt you. I know. I know. I didn't see it was you. Sure. It was an accident. You didn't know it was me. I had to have money. I went crazy. I... Why didn't you ask me? I was ashamed. I was going to put it back over and over. No, Bobby. Take it. As long as you need it. Don't feel bad. You... I owe you a life. My office. Pa. Pa. Be a good boy about me. Don't get into trouble. Simple case, miss. The old man walked in on a thug crack in the store and he let him have it. Does this look like it? Exactly. Of course, a torn bill isn't much. Lots of patched bills in circulation. But I cut my finger and it bled. Well, then you must have left a fingerprint. Which finger? Sure. Press it here. Remember where it was? About here. Well, that's something. Mike? Have this photograph and give it the works. Yes, sir. 420. 430. 440. 60. 80. 20 makes 500 dollars. Thank you, my young man. And here is the bill of sale. What is it? Something frightens you? <laughs> Responsibility. Perhaps you think you have paid too much. I've paid plenty. There is a way of making this school a gold mine. If you would but follow their precepts. Nietzsche and von Dreitschka. He transmuted all of life into a battlefield and Nietzsche was his tactician. What was their racket? Mankind. Believe in them. If the meek will inherit the earth, you can take it away from them. That is their gospel. Take those nuts with you. I'll only throw them out. No, no, they will give you strength, the will to power. Look. Old papers. Yes. Yellow, like gold. From Dreitscher and Nietzsche could show you how to mine blood out of them. <laughs> they would assay a hundred dollars to the ounce. The meek. 
Well, are you interested in hard realism, or shall I say in hard cash? You better get going, you'll miss your boat. Ah, yes. You cannot hear. Your ears are stuffed with the delusions of mass productions and, and noble purposes. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. Remember, Bob, it is in our contract that you take care of my birds. Sure, I will. Well, goodbye, my dreamer, and good luck. Have a nice trip, Professor. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. Oh, come in, Miss Jensen. Miss Jensen, what's the gag? This is business. What's the matter, honey? Don't feel so good. Oh, I know. It's the poor old man, darling. You can't help it because... Stop it, will you? Now, get this straight, Anna. This is a business office. I promised you a better job. Well, you've got it. First thing we'll do is put a little system into the place. Yes. We'll make this into a real institution. A college. talk about your being in this country illegally. I hope you can show your entry papers. Uh, no, I uh, lost them. Uh, maybe in Utah State when I work in a uh, copper mine. You wouldn't want to be sent back to the old country, would you? What old country? Me American. The school will help you. Understand, Clavish? Me American. Paper or no paper. Papa, what is it? You'll have trouble without your paper. Ah, paper. I built the railroad. I did court in Pennsylvania. I had farm in Kansas and gave my country four fine citizens. Fetch them your life. What's your funeral, Clavish? I'm only trying to help you. You're not trying to help me? You dirty crook. Papa, why? I know, I understand. 
such things as this country in America. <laughs> I won't give in. Oh, do like the others. Please, Pete. You are a sick man. You can't keep on hiding in solace like a... Oh, do it for your children. Four months they haven't seen their father. No. I fight. Oh, but without money you can. I go to young Barrett, the poor, always help the poor. This lawyer only will be like the others. No, his father was immigrant like us. He brought his boy up honest. He'll help us. Come. You are a fool. Sure, a fool, but like a man and an American. Yes, but with four kids, we can't afford a hero in the family. I know they blackmail. Barrett's boy will fight for me. Pete, wait. What is it? Don't go in, Papa. He's in there, that man himself. Ames. Kiss the children for me. Well, what do you think of my joint now? Why, it's wonderful. It looks like Columbia University. There's some students waiting to see you, Mr. Ames. Thank you, Miss Jensen. Where are you? Ah, good afternoon, Miss Compton. And Director, you are just in time. Excuse me a minute, sweetheart. Must have been wonderful to watch this place grow from nothing. Yes. Would you like to see the paper? Thank you. Hardly anything else in there but murders. Or divorces. I guess that's life. How does Fred Barrett's office look now? Nice. You'd never know the old place. I bet you're tickled, huh? Mm -hmm. Your, uh, boyfriend? Well, not quite. I guess you don't know what people are saying. About me? Mm-hmm. They say you're going to marry Fred Barrett. Well, he's got a nice office and he's all set and he's a swell boy. That's right. But you tell those people they're way ahead of me. Give them some kind of a break. Cut the fees in half. Think of their kids. Fees. No moral cuts on Yamas. It is unbecoming in you. This is characteristic of your fumbling character. You always wait until the fire scorches your fingers, like Anna, for example. Well, I've tried, but I just I have can't. no interest in your private affairs. Except insofar as a jealous woman endangers my pocketbook. All right, I'll see what I can do. Do? Why, already. You have given Anna a chance for a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the girl you want to marry. Perhaps to compare notes. Uh, you had better not go out there alone. Leave with Laura and trust Anna to my philosophic disposition. Don't be too tough with her, you I'll know. So guess a vacation. Give her a couple of thousand dollars. What? My money. Oh, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, Laura. Oh, uh, will you call Mr. Barrett's office and tell him we're on our way to pick him up? Yes, Mr. James. Goodbye, Miss Jensen. Goodbye. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. Charming girl, Laura. Charming. Miss Jensen, give me the list of the prospects who have failed to respond after several visits from our salesmen. Mm -hmm. We must find arguments to convince them. Oh, Mr. Ames and I were just discussing you, my dear. You have been working very hard. We thought you might like a vacation. Well, thanks. With a bonus. Say, a thousand dollars. Well, that's swell. Mr. Ames thought perhaps you might like to take your mother for a trip to, say, Italy. So that's it. You're barring me. Well, under the peculiar circumstances. You see, he's thinking of getting married. And he had to hand you the axe.
broken heart means nicely in Italy. Sun, flowers, laughter, music. Io la vidia, piedi grotto, tutte feste. Now, now, don't be upset. Your role is historic. The lively but fading Josephine stepped out of the way so that Napoleon might marry to the pure but stupid Austrian Duchess. I've got a nice wedding present for Mr. Ames. And here's something too. told the police she followed you that night. She tells that story. But there is a way to stop her. A wife cannot testify against her husband, marry Anna. No. No, I'd rather die. This is no time to be emotional about Lauren. This... No, Schwab, I won't do it. Remember the charge is murder and you are guilty. No, not murder. I himself said it was an accident. And he, he forgave me. But juries are not as sentimental as a dying man. You must. More visitors to see you. Five miles away at about 8.20. The medical examiner places the murder at 8 o'clock. Your father's broken watch. I got there just as the exercises started. They wouldn't let me through. Remember? I waved to you. Yes. Yes, I remember. That puts him there at 8.15. Couldn't possibly get to the Bronx in 15 minutes. Father, that's all we need. Laura's testimony that... And the right lawyer. Oh, yes, of course. We'll, we'll get Louis Friedley. He's... You know, Mr. Barrett, it would be a noble picture to see you defend your friend. Fred! No, no, we need a more experienced lawyer than I am. Perhaps I am in bad taste. It might be gruesome for you, my boy. Your own father. No, it's not that. I, I'd be glad I'd do anything. It's... Forgive me. But uh, it came to me as a beautiful picture. The murdered man's own son, defending the innocence of the accused. And no jury could find in its heart to do anything but set him free. Hey, Bob. Carry a pigeon, you dope. They're taking a recess before summing up. Yeah, he's a cinch to fry. Ames pulled a prize bono when he hired that kid lawyer. Probably the first and last appearance of Fred Barrett as an attorney. His defense of his father's murderer has shocked the jurors' finer sensibilities. What appeared to be a clever defense tactic has proved a fatal boomerang. Altogether sensationally dramatic. Oh, thrills at the best of my soul. Pencil Damon in navy blue suit, dark tie, and light blue shirt. 
defending still more handsome Pythias in that fetching costume of brown serge, pinstripe shirt, and brown tie. Seen the Pythias? <laughs> Who were they? A couple of Greeks. Court's about to resume. Now your feet no have to hide them more. They kill aim to shoot. Yes, I think so. Fine, <laughs> Ready to sum up, Mr. Baldwin. Yes, Your Honor. Please proceed. Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury, your duty in this case is simple and plain as the law which covers it. He who takes a life in the course of a felony must answer with his life. We proved beyond the shadow of a doubt Robert Ames murdered Max Berrick. In all my years in the criminal courts, I've never seen a clearer case of cold-blooded murder. The motive? Six hundred dollars, which the defendant needed to set himself up in business. Actual commission of the crime witnessed by Anna Jensen, his disconsolate sweetheart. Who contradicts the eyewitness? Another sweetheart, Laura Compton, both pitiable girls. But who contradicts Laura Compton and upholds and corroborates our eyewitness? The defendant himself. Let me call your attention to Exhibit A. His own fingerprints doom Robert Ames. His fingerprints upon this implement of death. This jar which held the pitiful plunder with which he crushed the old man's head. And what's left to be said? What are we waiting for? Here's a clear case of proven murder. We're waiting for the curtain speech in this tragic farce entitled, His Friend to the Bitter End. That was a great idea of yours. You were doomed anyway. Please proceed, Mr. Baldwin. I had no intention of being facetious, gentlemen, but it's your duty and my duty to name and challenge a tactic intended to hoodwink your emotions and cheat justice. Why did Robert Ames refuse to hire the finest legal talent which he could well afford? Why did he choose this green, inexperienced youth to plead his innocence? Because he has no case, he has no defense, he has no innocence. He has only a trick to camouflage. There sits the smoke screen, attempting to hide from your judgment the mangled remains of the father whom Robert Ames butchered. Mr. Baldwin, you must not even by implication impugn Mr. Barrett's motives. I agree with your honor and accept the rebuke. Gentlemen, Frederick Barrett is not on trial here, but Robert Ames is. You are to judge him, judge his tricks to defeat justice. Barrett is doing it for money. Money! Just Barrett is a worse criminal. His own flesh and blood for money. Money! I'm to kill his father. Order in the court. Gentlemen of the jury, you must not let this demonstration affect your judgment. You must understand that murder trials often induce hysteria. Proceed, Mr. Baldwin. I've finished, Your Honor. Thank you, gentlemen. Is counsel for the defense ready? Ready, Your Honor. Your Honor. Gentlemen of the jury, I wish to congratulate the district attorney on the technical case he has made against my client. My first and last client, if I read your faces correctly. But gentlemen, I, I must first ask you to suspend judgment, at least until we put back the personal issues involved here. Love. Jealous. Now, what was in Anna's heart when she accused Bob Ames? Love and hate. She loved Bob so much she couldn't let another woman have him. Even now she loves him. If Bob stood up here and said, Anna, marry me, she'd recant her story. There'd be no case. We cannot accept her testimony either way because she both loves and hates Bob. Her passion cannot must not rule your reason. Now take Laura Compton. 
She provides an alibi. Accept or reject it on her face. Look at her, gentlemen. Now that kind of girl doesn't commit perjury. Her fine reasonableness must persuade your reason. Now we come to the state's final and conclusive evidence. The defendant's fingerprints. How am I going to get those telltale fingerprints off that jaw? Now that calls for real talent. Ledger domain, like, like pulling rabbits out of a hat. Watch closely, gentlemen. The hand is quicker than the eye. Well, I give up. I can't do it. Those fingerprints are on that jaw. As a matter of fact, Bob's fingerprints are scattered all over the scene of the crime. They've been there for 15 years. Our place was virtually his home. That very jaw he held for my father. The afternoon of the crime. Certainly his fingerprints are on it. As the district attorney would say, well, what's left? Well, I believe I'm all that's left. And he's already told you what a weak thing I am. Tell me, gentlemen, do I love my father less if I love Bob like a brother? I want you to know something about Max Barrett. He was an immigrant, like the Pilgrim Fathers like the men who broke the wilderness and opened up the West. True, all he opened up was a small candy store, but he worked 18, 20 hours a day to make an American out of me, a man who would fight for justice. He was that kind of a man. That's why he kept an eye on Bob, an orphan, and nourished him on Maltese with an egg in it. Father loved Bob, and Bob worshipped him. To say that Bob killed him, it's like accusing Bob of patricide. He didn't have to kill my father for money. Father would have given him his last cent. What I'm doing here today is what my father would have me do. I'm not representing Bob Ames, but the soul and the spirit of Max Barrett. I speak for my father. May he rest in peace. But there'll be no rest for him, unless you free Bob Ames. Right, Bob Ames is sitting in a hot seat. The Barrett's speech blew the fuse out. This should make him the biggest bet in criminal law. He's great. He even shaked the tear out of me. All right, Professor, let's go. I've got plenty to tell you. My car is right here. Well, Professor, what's the first thing we do when we get to the school? Suppose you tell me. I'm going to throw you and your things right into the gutter. But gently, gently. And, uh, this? Worth exactly ten bucks. Jeez, how times have changed. You see, Schwabi, in this country, a man can't be tried twice for the same crime. Yes, that goes back to the Justinian cult. <laughs> you know everything. I also have a sense of drama myself. Can you imagine the effect upon Fred and Laura if I were to show them this little green peach? Gently, gently. Let me buy it from you. I'll give you every cent I got. We will continue our partnership along the same lines. I can't go on that way. I won't.
this is swell. Everything you like. Including you. And Chow Chow Pickles, Ginsburg's best. The very, very best. Good to get back in harness again, huh? Mm -hmm. It sure is. I'm gonna make a lot of changes. I'm gonna put the school on a different basis, Fred. Hey, no business. How you have it, I'm hoping to... Wait, Fred. In there, I had a lot of time to think things out. You know the people who come to my school? Well, they're always taken advantage of, pushed around, called foreigners. I want to get our people a break that's coming to them. What you said in court, well, they're like Pa, the new pioneers. Go partners in the school with me, Fred. I'll teach them and you'll protect them, see? And we'll call it the Max Barrett Institute. Will you go in with me, Fred? A toast. A toast to the Max Barrett Institute. There's only one drink for that toast. A Morley with an egg in it. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> Thanks. Wait. I've got something to add to that toast to make it perfect. To the happiness of you, too. No, no, not now, Bob. We'll wait. Sure, just like always, the three of us. Huh? Oh, no. From now on, I'll be the Dutch uncle in the family. You see, back there at the trial, when things look pretty black for me. Look, yeah. Bob, just because I... Oh, this to... isn't gratitude, kid. But at a time like that, you see things the way they ought to be. You two, making your life together. That's the way it ought to be. That jury verdict didn't matter, not for a minute. See? What is it? It's just another debt I've got to pay. this have to happen to us? It could have happened to anyone. There's no pattern to go by. Things have to happen. Sometimes, there just isn't enough life to go around. You mean, like Paul? What do we do then? We share it. And try to make it last longer. Like the Maltese? Like the Maltese. <laughs> 